Today, I'm gonna be giving you my best advice on how to hit Unreal. The system has become a lot harder than it was before, so don't beat yourself up if you've been having a hard time. If you wanna hop around in this video, timestamps are down below. One of the biggest questions right now is how do points even work in ranked mode? It's really unclear, like we don't see at the end of the game how much points we go up, but here's how it works from my understanding. Early game kills are not worth as much as late game kills. So if you make more consistent end games, you're probably gonna go up ranks a lot faster. Fighting higher ranked players gives you more points than fighting lower ranked players. And then doing the ranked quests is key to ranking up. So if it says to get some damage dealt with a pistol, make sure you're rocking a pistol because that is key. When it comes to which game mode is the best, it's really hard to say. Apparently solos gives you the fastest rank ups, but solos is also probably the hardest mode and it has the longest queue times so if you're really good at solos run that you should be ranking up the fastest if not definitely run duos or squads if you're not rocking these loadouts i don't know what you're doing and i understand some people have different preferences but i'm telling you if you get good at the game this is the loadout you should be rocking havoc pump shotgun is easily way better than any of the others Flapjack is the best spray weapon for fighting, but if you can't find a high rarity Flapjack, a high rarity SMG, a combat SMG, could also hold its weight. For the rest of the slots, you know, it's personal preference. I usually carry three sets of heals, but you could also carry a flare gun, a repeater, or a cannon. Those are all really good options. Now, something you need to know is ranked mode is a fighting game mode. Any good player goes into ranked with the mindset that they're gonna fight as many people as they can find to try to get better at fighting. I'm not saying that's what you need to do, but when you go into ranked, you gotta be ready to get W keyed. At the end of this video, I'm gonna break down a game and tell you some of the best fights to take, where to take those fights, etc. So if you get third party a lot or you struggle to win your fights, definitely stay to watch that. The most important thing in ranked for going up ranks fast is drop spots. I'm not gonna give you drop spots in this video. Why? Because if I give you them, they're gonna become over contested. What I am going to tell you is if you're having trouble ranking up, stop hot dropping. I'm not saying all you guys were, but I know some of you were, don't lie. Going places like Slappy, Mega City, Creaky Compound, Center Map Drops, those spots are not gonna help you rank up. Why? Because early game kills do not count for a lot of points. So what you should be doing is picking one drop spot that maybe doesn't have the most amount of players going there. It could be a non-name location or an edge map POI, but pick one spot and stick with it, master it. It might take a while, but once you get a drop spot down and you start surviving consistently, that is when you're gonna see the most rank up because making consistent end games is super important to going up ranks. The last thing I wanna talk about before we get into the game breakdown, is how should you be practicing to get better at fighting? Like I said, ranked is a fighting game mode, and if you can't hold your own in fights, you're gonna have a lot of trouble ranking up. First off, you need to get good mechanics. I recently released a version two of my practice map, the code is down below. You can practice peace control, free building, peak shots, all kinds of things to get your fighting mechanics up. I definitely recommend warming up in there. But the biggest way you're going to get better at fighting is by running 1v1s. Why? Because in ranked mode, you might take like three, four fights every 10 minutes. That is not a lot compared to what you could get in creative. Unlimited fighting practice at a fast rate. When I was getting better at fighting, I 1v1'd people that were better than me, got destroyed on repeat, until eventually, you know, I caught on to some of their tips and tricks, and I started to be able to hold my own. Doing that and watching fighting tutorials is gonna be the fastest way to get better at fighting. I have a really good 1v1 map coming out soon, so stay tuned. With all that being said, Let's hop into this game breakdown. I landed at this small spot in between Mega City and Frenzy Fields. I got absolutely blessed off spawn with a pump and SMG and a little shield. So I was able to immediately sneak push the person next to me. While I'm pushing up to this guy, I aim down my sights when I get close. This makes it so your footsteps are even more quiet. You can't just crouch walk on them or they're gonna hear you. He built up above me and I didn't have enough mats to fight him up there. So I played the chop game, pickaxe, pull out my shotgun, pickaxe, pull out my shotgun until he eventually falls down and I get the kill. This time I do farm up because now it's a little bit further into that early game and people are gonna have mats. I don't push into Mega City because there's gonna be a lot of players over there. Instead, I push over to Frenzy Fields. Let me tell you how the fighting works over here. People will land at all these different buildings in Frenzy. Whoever fights first, all the other players are gonna collapse on that fight. 
At this point, it's far enough into the game that I assume all the players have already collapsed there because I saw a big fight going on and it had just finished. Knowing that, I push up to this player because I figure it's going to be a simple 1v1. Right here, I was trying to bait my opponent to make an edit on me while I had my pump out. Sure enough, he did, and I hit him for 30 damage and almost died. I definitely need to spend more time in the aim trainer in my practice map, I'm not gonna lie. At this point, so many people would just rotate straight to the center of the map and start fighting. And if you guys have watched my videos before, you know that every single player in the entire game is rotating to the center of the map right now. So if you do that as well, you're gonna get caught in a fight with a million third parties. What I do instead is push to an outskirt location where I know some players will be. People always land this building and there's a vault over here. So at this point in the game, there's a 100% gonna be a player here. I flare to start this fight so I know where he is, and this turns into one of the most ridiculous build fights. Bro was cranking to the moon on repeat. I almost ended the fight a few times. For example, right here, he got the double edits above me. So I figured he was either gonna set up a peek or jump in. So I repositioned out of that box. Sure enough, he jumped right in, and I was able to get a shot from the side here. But this is what I mean. I kept cranking up, but he kept cranking higher, and I was running out of mats. So I go to drop down here, and he bodies me. Long story short, I did not play this fight very well, and if this fight happened in the center of the map, I would have 100% died because there would have been a third party to clean me out. But because we're fighting near the edge of the map, even though I win this by the skin of my teeth, I'm chilling because I have time to farm and heal with no third parties around. At this point, I check the keys nearby me and I wait for the cash to spawn so that I can get stacked on heals. And once I get all of that, I'm ready to fight again. I'm gonna be honest, I push up to Rumble Ruins here, which may not be the smartest idea if you're trying not to get third party. At this point in the game, if you go to a name location like this, there's oftentimes gonna be more people pushing here to look for fights. So you could have gone more left up this way to try to find people. You might not have found people there, but you would have been less likely to get third party. Do you see what I'm saying? But I get a fry on this guy. He ran into the ruins here, so I don't just break through, I go find a different angle and surprise him. I could have fried him for up there but I slipped inside. I had a health advantage so I'm just running at him and utilizing the fact that he doesn't have certain builds placed. For example he didn't have a cone in his box at the start so I slip a ramp in. And then he didn't have this wall in between us so I go to place that wall. I could have also just held my pump out waiting for him to edit. Both would have been valid options. I got a little bit weak in that fight and I could have healed with slow heals, but I was a little bit afraid that a third party was coming. I couldn't tell if it was the footsteps of the boss or an enemy, so I healed up with the ice cream. Sure enough, another player was pushing up here. Like I said, at name location, there are gonna be more players around pushing up. While ramping up at this angle, I also place floors. If you look at the perfect angle, you can slip floors over your enemy from this angle, which is crazy. And then I got a free double edit on him. As soon as I get that health advantage, I go on the major aggression. I noticed him drop down and the fastest way to get down there wasn't spraying through, it's going around the side. I'm able to get there before he even gets a mini off. I pickaxe once and pull my shotgun out just in case he edits on me. I'm able to shoot the wall with the shotgun because it wasn't fully built yet and it breaks it and I slip a ramp in. When they end up on top of your ramp, a lot of times they try to edit. Which is why when I went to the side, made this edit, I instantly reset it so that I wouldn't get shot. But I noticed his wall was weak so I try to run through with the shotgun. If you time this right, you can fly straight straight through their wall and get the kill. But I guess I mistimed it or just lagged a little bit and didn't go through. At this point, I can tell he's starting to panic a little bit. He left his top open and I'm able to just get right up in his face. Keeping smart pressure on in a fight, not exposing yourself, but keeping the pressure on the enemy will lead to the quickest and freest kills. Because I used my ice cream, I knew my cash was still close, so I go get more slurps just so I'm mega stacked. Once I get that, I push back into the ruins once again to try to find some more fights. I'm not gonna lie, right here, I did not mean to pickaxe his wall again, and I got pre-fired. What I was trying to do was cancel my pickaxe right before hitting the wall, so he shoots his own wall. I do that a lot, but I messed up the timing. The good news is, I took time before this fight to make sure I have enough heals. So I get healthy, and the fight is even, just like that. There was a third party nearby, why? Because we're near a name location, that's the main reason. He sprayed at me earlier, but now he's spraying at the enemy. It threw off the opponent's attacks so hard that he was just standing on my floor. Free kill. But it's time to take out this third party because nobody likes a third party, bro. This guy was just cranking up to the moon. So instead of cranking up with him like I did in that earlier fight, I immediately go for the chop out. I learned my lesson. I'm chopping slow, trying to bait him to drop on my wall, but he wasn't dropping. 
Bro was so confident on that high ground. So eventually I get the full chop, hit him while he falls, and I have a health advantage. Now it's just time to pressure him, get up in his face, and we get the free kill. Now it's time to drop our ego and use our brains here. The zone is pulling far. What do we want to do here? Fight on back edge? Heck no, bro. There were multiple people already fighting on back edge, and if I would have joined that, I probably would have died to zone, even if I win the fight. So I got ahead, and while I'm closer to the zone, I get a sneak fry on this guy. I do this to literally everyone. Look how I'm just slipping ramps in their box, left and right. Pretty sure I've done it in like every fight so far. Right here, I pretend to pressure from one side, go to the other side, and then back to the other side, and I'm able to get a sneaky wall take and 80 damage white. This dude is absolute one shot, and that's when a third party pushes up. Because there's a third party, I take time, make sure I'm max HP, so I'm not dying to a third party here. I heard them get in a 50-50, meaning they were both in the same box, shots were firing left and right, so I immediately push up because I assume he's weak. You can kind of tell based on how the fight ends if they're going to be weak or not. Because I had heard that, I got very aggressive while pushing up here. I ended up getting a free box, and sure enough, he was weak. I hear the last two players fighting on the back edge of zone. I could have went ahead of the zone and held them on back edge, but instead, I went up to secure both the kills. I just got the mythic flapjack, and that thing is a third party machine. I managed to get the one kill and would not let the pressure off on the other. Notice how I'm not really getting on his wall to start this fight. I am just repositioning and repositioning, continuing to spray at his wall so we cannot get heals off, and also trying to bleed some bullets through. Eventually, I do get on his wall here and I go for the wall take, but I choke the edits. He had time to reposition, and so instead of pushing from that same angle, I immediately try to find where he positioned to and continue the pressure so he can't get any heals off. I track where he's going before he even gets there, and sure enough, I was able to get the wall take before you get settled and get the free kill. I hope you guys learned some new stuff that's going to help you on your road to Unreal in this video. I got more content on the way, more practice maps, all sorts of stuff coming, so stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.